So since you guys uh, express interest in some of the other things that I do in my life, um, I spent the past two weekends putting together a hydroponic garden outside. Uh, actually, this project started probably last summer with trying to figure out how, how big it was going to be and where I was going to put it and just kind of engineering the whole thing together. And then the, the past two weeks, well, and then there was also during the winter, I started ordering all the parts and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, I'm going to show you what I've got put together here in a minute. Before I do that, I, I do want to thank uh, Julian sent me a birthday card, so thank you very much. Um, that's always very, very flattering when you guys uh, send me things. Um, it's uh, especially when when I, so many of you have followed me for so long that your handle and then maybe your Facebook uh, had two different names, but yet I, you know, I've gotten accustomed to know who you are and stuff like that. So I just, I think that's, uh, it's really, uh, cool as far as the community, uh, that goes with this. But yeah, I mean, I try to open up my life so that people can see that who I am, who my character is, uh, cause it just it seems like so many people at this point that uh, they don't have any character whatsoever. Um, but that's, that's a whole other thing for a whole other uh, topic. But anyway, I'm going to take you guys outside and I'm going to show you uh, the garden. And yeah, if you've got any questions about what I'm doing, um, I start off real small when I got out here, I had a two foot by four foot garden in the room that I was staying out, which was a 13 by 13, uh, reappropriated barracks room that had sort of a hallway area and a kitchenette area and a, and a bathroom. But, um, uh, and then now here's what I'm doing uh, on the large scale, you know, gone from growing stuff in mason jars to growing. Yeah, I think my next step's going to be a greenhouse. I, I can just eventually. So anyway, we'll go out there. We'll take a look. And if you guys uh, have any questions, uh, you know, shoot me a comment. Okay, so here is the hydroponic garden. So first up, we have basically cherry tomatoes. Uh, I got the seeds off of Connie West. Uh, she owns the Little Alien out in Rachel, Nevada. And uh, if you ever saw the movie Paul, they actually filmed in front of it. And then when they went inside of it, uh, that was actually a set. So if you're... But anyway, um, I got some spaghetti squash here. That's We got a couple of them growing right there. Um, and then some uh, cantaloupe. These are tombstone ghost peppers. A friend of mine got me. Uh, my ghost peppers have uh, require a lot of humidity, a lot of heat, and so these they grow in tombstone, Arizona. And so, um, and you can kind of see here, there the the new growth is doing really well, and the older leaves that were in you know perfect fifty percent humidity conditions with no ultraviolet light hitting them, I'll, I'll end up pruning all those off. But the new stuff is looking pretty good. Um, I only stuck these out in the sun for like a few days the weekend before. Uh, and so they did pretty well without, because you have 10 minutes out here and they're all like, I'm dying. And then these are San Marzano tomatoes. I grow them for my pizza sauces. Um, this is like the sauce tomato that you want. So even when I go down to Vegas and have a, a, a wood-fired pizza, they use regular tomatoes and they have to add sugar to it uh, to tamp down the acidity. So anyway, uh, the way this is set up here is I have these woodpecker, um, these green ones here are two gallons per hour drip. And I've got it on three quarter line and then I added the teas to it and there's a couple of stakes down there. Then I have some polypropylene twine that I anchored down there using a piece of PVC elbow. And, uh, and then that comes up here and then you should be able to hopefully see the steel cable that runs across. So yeah, I mean, just every little thing, like having to drill the holes and get all that stuff lined up. Had to build the frame for this shade cloth up here. Um, this is supposed to be 50%, but I measured it and I'm only I'm noticing that it's blocking out about 75% of the light, which is fine because when I did the daily light integral out here, where it's just nothing but liquid sunshine, I was looking at uh, 65, and plants usually don't go above 30. Uh, things like lettuces, they want like 15. Um, so anyway, so and it all sits on the drain pipe, and the drain goes back. And I got some um, some uh, uh, silicone tape, but these fittings are not leaking. I mean, that one right over there shows a little moisture underneath, but it's not enough for me to worry about. 
And then the setup over here, down there is uh, just a, a tote, a bin, that uh, I'm holding the hydroponic solution in there. And I've got the, the original pump that I purchased was the wrong pump to get. Uh, and I originally, all this was going to be uh, rigid, and then, yeah. Um, so anyway, I need to get one of these pumps that I can adjust the pressure right here. So I've got to get, these need to be black, because you can see... I, uh, just in a week, I'm starting to get some smooth buildup, some algae probably, and uh, nice and clear on this side because I took this apart and got this little accumulator. And then there is the pressure gauge. So I have this set for about 25 PSI. And then this right here um, is a filter, and it's got a valve on the bottom down here that I can just open it up, and anything gets caught in the filter just flows right out. And then a little air pump. Um, this is not a leak, by the way. That's from opening this up and getting some of the mess out of there. And I have it set for every uh, 55 minutes. It turns on for five minutes. And so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, let me know if I, you ever decide you want to get into hydroponic gardening. I've been doing this ever since I moved out here. And I mean, just these, these guys, just in a week, they... I should have taken a picture of last week, but anyway. But I've got to prune off all the older stuff that's you know showing. Like that's really not that bad. I pruned off the ones that look really bad uh, earlier today. So yeah, that's this is what I've been busy trying to get done. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. So one thing that I wanted to mention before I ended this video was the reasons why I did this. Uh, so one of the first reasons that I did this was just water concern in general. Um, I had purchased these uh, uh, Wi-Fi controlled uh, controllers that would water my gardens and I can get on the app and I can see humidity levels and the soil temperature and how much water I'm using. And my 12 foot by four foot raised bed garden was using 60 gallons of water per day. And that's a lot. I don't know what my bill came to because I just I just pay it. I, it's, it's water, right? you know. It's it's a minimal expense, but at the same time, it's still one of those things that when you consider the name of this town that I live in is Shoshone for little water. Uh, so we have to actually bring it in from another location. So the the other side of it was a lot of people that do this are concerned about uh, if the power fails, then maybe their system will go down. Well, I'm generating my own power. I'm not generating my own water, but I make my own power. So I figured, oh, you know, I can do this. I can generate the electricity I need, and that's all battery backed up. Uh, we also have a short growing season. Um, I've been told in the six years that I've been here, don't put anything in the ground because after until after Memorial Day weekend because it will snow. This is the first year that it hasn't done that, and that's when I that's why I took a chance uh, eight days ago in, when I put these plants uh, in their little containers, uh, because the threat was like around 50. That's the, there was nothing close to 30 as far as the forecast goes. This has been a very unique year. I, I, people that have lived here their whole lives are just like, yeah, I don't know what went on. Sometime last May, we started getting clouds. And I mean, the sky is usually just blue. That's it. And I mean, even today we got white fluffy clouds and it's just like, and the, the amount of snowfall, I mean, California got hammered and it's just rained constantly. Anyway, that, that aside. Um, so we have from say June to maybe mid October before the first frost. And so if I grow hydroponically, I can grow faster as well. And so that's another thing that was a consideration for doing this. Um, the other thing was nutritional deficiencies. Uh, on occasion, I get a blossom rot on my tomatoes, and that is a calcium nutrition uh, deficiency. And that's because, not for lack of calcium, but the difference is uh, because the pH is so high in the water. Ironically, the grocery store sells alkaline water with a pH of 9.5 plus, and it's like, our pH is 10. Why don't you just drink the water here? We actually have really good water here. Uh, and so that, that's one of the problems. And so when the pH is so high, um, above, above anywhere to say six, five or whatever, let's just cap it at seven. If it's above that, then it starts locking out nutrients and the plants can't get to them. And so if I can keep the, maintain the pH in the hydroponic solution around five, five to six, five, then I'm doing pretty good. I'm also giving them exactly what they need to grow faster and bigger. Um, for example, and this is not technically hydroponically grown, but one of the things that I do with my hydroponic solution when I'm 
changing it out in my the in, indoor grow tents and stuff is I put it on my outdoor plants, which are all amazingly happy. But I got this this ivy that, uh, as you can see, just standard, not yeah, you know, pretty pretty standard, right? And then I started watering it with the hydroponic solution, and I'm getting huge leaves. <laughs> I mean, if you compare. I don't even know if I, that's coming across on the camera. Like if you put that next to the one, it, yeah. So that's the other reason is just being able to grow a lot and, and bigger and faster and better and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, any questions? Well, one question that I probably get, I'll just go ahead and answer it now. The white stuff that I'm using in the uh, buckets is perlite. Uh, it was cheaper than the, um, the stuff that I use when I'm doing it indoor, and that's these expanded clay pebbles. Uh, so yeah, I just went ahead and got a couple of four cubic foot, I think they're four cubic foot of perlite. I'm interest, well, yeah, interestingly, perlite is actually out here. Um, up there, uh, there's a black rock that's obsidian, and uh, yeah, it travels in the perlite. Now, the stuff I bought, I bought. The reason is, is because what they do is they, they, um, they heat it up thousand degrees and it puffs up like popcorn and then that's what you get when you get your potting soil that's the perlite that you get not the stuff out here the stuff out here before it's cooked basically is sort of glassy and, and um, almost like it formed strings before it solidified and so yeah there but it is it's out here I, I might have a picture of that up anyway so um, yeah I've made this longer than I planned to as usual